What's up, guys? It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. <sighs> Let's get ready for what the fit man. I feel like I've, I've got to get on TikTok more because now I'm getting pretty much all my content exclusively from TikTok. I just, uh, this is how I know I'm getting old. I just, I, I can't be fucked to go on TikTok and learn how to use TikTok. Are there any people out there who want to be like my TikTok intern? My TikTok intern, teach me how to use TikTok and make it funny. Just let me talk and make it funny. Rant done, back to TikTok. This is a video by somebody named Rav Malik. A healthy person has about one teaspoon of sugar in their blood. All it takes is a quarter of a teaspoon extra in your blood to be considered diabetic. That's how tightly regulated your body is. Here's a healthy breakfast that we're told to eat, and that's one serving, which is about 23 grams of carbs. Here's how much sugar that turns to in your bloodstream, 23 grams. Because that's starch, 23 grams of starch turns to 23 grams of glucose because your stomach breaks it into sugar. Here's how the 23 grams in your body compares to your blood sugar, and all you need is this much more in your blood to be considered diabetic. Now, your body's pretty good at regulating this, but by doing this multiple times a day, and let's be real, no one's eating one serving. Everyone eats a bowl. And look at that, 46 grams of sugar. And that's how that compares to regular blood sugar. The body eventually gets overloaded, and the sugar's no longer coming down. So why is no one talking about this? Follow the money. Oh, the money. The there we go. There we go. There's, there's the big pharma, big food industry, bro. They always had the same art. It doesn't matter if they're low carb crazies, vegan crazies, fasting crazies. After you've completely deconstructed their argument and painted them to a logical corner, the argument they always go back to is, well, the government's trying to make us sick, bro. Big pharma, follow the money. Listen, my research was funded by the Egg and Dairy Council. I got a lot of money from them. Now, I didn't make up a bunch of bullshit just because they funded me, although I'm sure vegan crazies will say they did. But I don't know if you know this, but the meat and low carb industry also funds studies, you fucking moron! Anywho, let's take his actual claims. He says we have this much sugar in our bloodstream and he shows that little amount of sugar, which actually, if I want to be pedantic, you're showing sucrose. Sucrose actually is not in our bloodstream. It's glucose that's in our bloodstream. Sucrose is a combination of glucose and fructose. You don't have that kind of fructose floating around in your bloodstream. Sorry, Ram. But let's just pretend it's glucose and give him the benefit of the doubt and assume he knows the difference and he's just trying to make a point and I'll put my pedantic self aside. Yes, you have a small amount of blood glucose in your bloodstream. I can make the same fucking argument for sodium. Like literally, you have a very small amount of sodium in your bloodstream. Oh my God, if you have a meal with 2000 milligrams of sodium, look what happens. Yeah, the body's pretty good at regulating this. No shit, because otherwise you just die from everything every time you fucking ate, you moron. So when we eat, we have something called insulin, which helps dispose of glucose into cells. I'm sure what Rav would say is, well, when you do this multiple times a day, you become insulin resistant. Not fucking really. Not unless you're typically like gaining body weight and expanding your fat tissue. Fat tissue, when it gets too big and overloaded, starts to create problems with insulin sensitivity. Now, part of this can be chalked up to the fact that as adipose tissue expands, it becomes harder to add more fatty acids and glucose into that fat tissue. And so since it cannot be disposed of, it starts accumulating in the bloodstream and you need more insulin to dispose of that glucose. Also, adipose tissue produces adipokines, which seem to negatively impact insulin sensitivity. But if you are a healthy person and you are insulin sensitive, it's not gonna do shit. In fact, we have studies showing that even if you eat a high carb diet, if you control overall calories, you can improve your insulin sensitivity. And even going to the extreme, there's a study by Serwit et al. back in 2001, where they gave either over 100 grams of sucrose per day or around 10 grams of sucrose per day. Both groups were in a calorie deficit. I think they were both eating 1,700 calories a day and they were eating the exact same macros per day. The only difference was one group was low sugar and one group was high sugar. Guess what happened in both groups? They all lost the same amount of weight, the same amount of fat, 
and they improve their insulin sensitivity. So I'm sorry, Rav, what you're showing, while probably compelling to 12 year olds, anybody who's had basic fucking science understands that you don't actually know what the fuck you're talking about. Guys, don't fall victim to this stuff. You can make the exact same argument also for amino acids and urea. Oh my God, ammonia is toxic to the bloodstream. If you eat protein, ammonia shows up in your bloodstream, but it doesn't stay there, asshole, because you have the urea cycle to get rid of it. Glucose doesn't stay in your bloodstream unless you're really, really sick because your body disposes of it. Same thing is true of fats. If you eat a high fat meal, you'll actually see like short term negative effects on endothelial function, all these things that low fat and vegan people like to talk about. And all that shit's also overblown. There's big rises in inflammatory markers in response to a high fat meal. It's in the short term. It's not something that sticks around long term. What these idiot nutritional zealots don't realize is they all make the same of arguments. Vegans and low carb people are in opposition to each other, but they make the exact same arguments. And then when you've broken it all down, the last thing they resort to is an appeal to conspiracy theories. So y'all are actually just the same people. You just chose a different religion to follow. All right, everyone. I'm sure the comments are going to be fun on this one. Get in there and tell me how much you hate me. And if you really want to piss me off, go and buy some of my stuff because I hate it when you do that. All right. Catch you next week.